Hi, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Finding Data Friends, where we have found a new data, hopefully, friend. Uh, <laughs> Kuhn, thanks, sure thanks for joining us today. Uh, do you want to tell everyone who you are? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Kuhn Verbeek. Um, I live in Belgium, a very wonderful, tiny country uh, in somewhere in the west of Europe. Uh, I've been working in IT since 2007. Uh, first, did some general IT consultancy, and then uh, I was fired, uh, which was right before my wedding while my wife was pregnant. So not the best Perfect. time of my career-wise. It was one of the best things that happened to me because I was recruited by a company uh, that did business intelligence. So this is how I rolled into the business intelligence world. They sent me to a tr couple of trainings like uh, integration services, analysis services at a company called UTU. Uh, where I met the trainer Nico Jacobs, which is also a speaker, uh, Sikel Waldorf on Twitter. Uh, and at the end of the training, he said, like, uh, sometimes you meet uh, at something called uh, the Sikel User Group, uh, if you want to attend it. And at the moment, I was thinking, like, ah, meet a bunch of data nerds. This is not how I'm going to spend <laughs> my evenings. Fast forward 14 years, and here I am, apparently. Joke's on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. I'm <Damn> you, Nico. <laughs> So this is how I got started in the Microsoft data platform. Been doing BI ever since. Uh, first on-prem with integrated service analysis, reporting service, all the old school stuff. Uh, then we moved to SharePoint BI. <laughs> it's almost like big data clusters. And then, uh, <laughs> and then of course, we moved to the cloud. Uh, switched co uh, companies a couple of times, but I've always been very active in the community, mostly local community, uh, speaking blogging, writing, uh, writing lots of articles on mlsicletips.com. I have my own blog at which I occasionally, it's a very occasionally blog something. Uh, but I really love speaking and engaging with the community. Um, and mentoring, uh, not to forget. Excuse me? And mentoring, not to forget. And mentoring, yeah. I've mentoring a couple of times now for new stars of data, uh, for data mines connect as well. And I think one or two times for a group buy. I'm not sure if that is still a thing. But um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure it is actually. I haven't seen yeah, that for a while. Yeah. Oh, it, it hasn't been a thing in a while. It's in theory it is still out there. Daniel, if mm. you are watching, let us know what's going on. Yeah, perfect. All right. So here I am, uh, 14 years later, still doing the things I love, uh, and especially doing working with communities is something that I really enjoy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love that uh, SQL user groups are quite often the way that people kind of move from being just working at a company, doing their thing to like getting involved in the wider kind of data community and then getting completely sucked into speaking yeah. and, and collaborating with, with other people. It's super cool. Yeah, yeah it was more yeah, the speaking it's... part. I first uh, started with answering questions on SQLServerCentral.com. I did that for quite a long time, very intensive. I was very high in the leaderboard, uh, and that, that's where nice. I met Grant Fucci and Steve Jones and other people like that. Um, because I think I wanted to learn as much as I could, and I was like browsing through the newsletters and the, and the forums. I was like, uh, it seems people do not know how Google works, so I'll do that for them <laughs> for yeah. some reason. A lot of questions like, oh, there's always the same questions. And I just started answering questions to improve my own knowledge as well. So yeah. this is how that's cool. the whole community thing started rolling, answering questions, uh, then started writing stuff, presenting stuff and stuff like that. You're awesome. Yep. I, I was slightly giggling when you said um, that you're not going to spend your evening with a bunch of data nerds because um, two weeks ago at Data Saturday Vienna, that was basically my session when I was talking about community engagements um, and stories in the community and all that. And th this was basically me until SQL Saturday back then, Vienna um, 2016, which was my first ever SQL Saturday or even community event at all. Because before that was like, yeah, um, sorry, nah, my, my weekends are to spend with friends and same for evenings and stuff. And well, um, some things have changed since then. Let's say that. So yeah. for those of you out there who do not attend user groups or data yeah. Saturdays or SQL Saturdays or any other events, join us. We have cookies. <laughs> We're cool. Sometimes here. <laughs> We're the cool kids table. Exactly. <laughs> Self declared and proclaimed, but still. Yeah. It's also very <laughs> nice that uh, the SQL community or the data community, Power BI community in general, is very tight knit. 
sort of like a family. That's why we have the Seagull family hashtag. Uh, so he said, oh, I'm not going to spend weekends with friends. But over time, a lot of people from mm -hmm. the data community become friends. And obviously, this is what this podcast is all about. Yeah, exactly. Great reminder the podcast so the first question of the podcast oh, we are, uh, we're recording i didn't know we forgot we were just having a chat uh <laughs> what is your favorite data thing you've mentioned quite oh. a few things as you've come through your career but if you had to pick just one that is Actually, data. So, uh, i'm not sure what to choose the first one is performance tuning in a data warehouse context or like okay. where, where you can go in and it's like black magic and suddenly everything is fast and it's like yeah you have a server but my iphone is more powerful than your server, stuff like that. <laughs> this is how plus indexes work. And the other thing is, um, it happens quite a lot in, in BI scenarios, data warehouse scenarios, where you can put on a detective cap because someone from the business says, you, all the data is wrong. And it's like, which data is wrong? It's like a screenshot of, a very small screenshot of, of some report. Like, this is wrong. It's like, can you please tell me? which report and which filters you used, and then, okay, this is wrong. And then you start some sort of detective journey throughout mm -hmm. the whole layers of the data warehouse system so to find out where it goes wrong. Sometimes you find it fast. Sometimes you spend hours just trying to figure out. And there's one occasion where like, okay, there's something wrong. Something is not being calculated correctly. And just spend hours and hours researching. And it turned out that um, they defined one column, uh, a numeric, with all the maximum like 10 decimals before the decimal point and like 26 afterwards and then they are multiplying a lot of stuff apparently sql server hates when you start multiplying numbers when there are lots of digits uh digits behind the decimal point so it made some rounding error and if you do it enough then of course you get some differences so i, I just amazing export all of the data to excel like we all do and then i just calculate it in excel and it's the numbers are correct and it's the same data. And then someone on Twitter, that's what I like about Twitter. You can just mm -hmm. ask questions and people all chime in to help. I said, oh, maybe you should have less decimals. And then I just changed it to like numeric 10.6. And then suddenly everything was correct. Uh, so amazing. I like those kind of detective uh, stuff. And most of the time, just uh, someone did something wrong in the source database. It's like, oh, <laughs> and then they have to correct it. And then, when oh, has well. that ever happened? Yeah, 80% yeah. of the time. <laughs> yeah. True. Inventing numbers. Yeah. Zero days since customer fucked something up. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it's always like, this is the business rule, and then you build actual reports on it, and it's like, ah, it's not correct, and then you say, ah, this is the business rule. Ah, yes, but we have this one exception, and then mm -hmm. two days later, ah, we have another exception, and then at the end, the business rules much, much, much longer. Which especially gets super nasty um, if they tell you about all these exceptions one by one, like week or month by oh, month, yeah. rather than just yeah. giving, being like, yeah, so this is kind of what we're doing, but um, these are because if you know what the potential exceptions are, you can kind of design the entire solution to it from the yeah. beginning rather than just being like, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. It's not that big of a deal. It's just an extra 10 lines of codes here. Oh, that's just an extra 15 lines here. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, this looks like Ben wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes just like, story. Uh, everything runs, ah, uh, but for this one particular client, we do it completely different. I was like, oh yeah. Okay. Right. Good to know. Um, but yeah. So that is my, I think my most, one of the most favorite things I'd like to do in the BI data warehouse world is, Trying to figure yeah, I agree. Out. I love that detective stuff, like whatever it is, whether it's like a failed job or like something's not quite working right, or like how does this even get here? There's like all these pieces that fit together. I agree, that's mm -hmm. super cool. Especially if you find data it. data forensic. Well, yeah, yeah. If you don't find it, then it's just just forget that ever happened. Then I come home and my wife immediately sees something's wrong at your work. Yeah, yeah, because you're still like, ah. yeah. <laughs> So when you're not investigating what customers may, I mean, let's face it, it's, it's well, maybe not always, but yeah. in a good chunk of cases, it comes down to something, as you already said, that either happened in the source system or um, someone on the customer end just applied a real quick fix. <laughs> um, 
um just you know that's just the other day i had a customer um that was like oh um i need um basically something to work um in a couple of different ways so they basically just copy and pasted a piece of code that i wrote um including an extra insert which uh, basically tripled um the data in that table so yeah i'm not sure Perfect. that was really what they were going for but anyways if if you're not a data forensic sherlock yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite non-data thingy to do well um i'm a typical it geek i think um like the, the stereotype i like i like to read comic books I like watching comic book movies or action movies um I also do a little bit of Lego, like you can see the, the, the big Iron Man thingy over here. Um, so those kind of stuff, but I also like to uh, do sports a lot. I try to do some sort of exercise every day. As we're here, uh, at least two members of The Threat on, on Twitter, uh, which started a couple of years ago at Data Grill, where um, mm -hmm. we went for a run and then we try to encourage each other. And it's still going on years after which is really nice wow. to encourage people i think ben is also mm -hmm. part of the threat right now um i've actually run excuse with me i was tagged in the original tweet so yeah you were the organizer of course so of uh data grilling uh so i've run with both of you on, dif on different occasions both while mm -hmm. extremely hangover so good memories <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <Yeah>. perfect <laughs> uh so ex so exercise came running or sometimes swimming or just with a little bit with weights at home or stuff like that. Um, also, something different is that uh, my wife and I, we, we do ballroom dancing and lapping dancing as well. Um, she's wow. very, very talented and I'm not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, she has to put up with me, I think. Um, That's cool. But it's, it's, it's really fun to do. Uh, it's uh, a little bit of everything because you have to uh yeah of course you have to move around so it's it's, uh, it's good exercise but also good exercise for the mind because you have to count on the music and have to remember all the steps and then there's a lot of thing that all comes together at the same time uh so it's a it's a good cure against getting old i think hmm. no, that's cool i should have known that like 10 years ago <laughs> might have helped me back then it's yeah. not too late then yeah <laughs> i yet have to get my first run of the year in so there's that now is that going, again. are you still injured a little bit or or just no time? time constraint being lazy um especially after gaining a couple of extra pounds or whatever your preferred unit of measure is over the christmas and then weather was honestly really shitty um so we had a couple of um almost weeks where everything was icy and snowy and was like yeah yeah there, there's no point in risking it. it now I, i'm not really on a streak um but um yeah i really want to get back to it but i'm kind of reversing things a bit because usually you get hungry after you work out and now i'm already hungry without just thinking of the workout <laughs> so hungry so that's hungry. a great segue ben what, oh, what should we you. eat today uh, right. Kuhn, the final question in the podcast is uh, if, if you've seen this before, we've accidentally kidnapped or maybe willingly kidnapped some people uh, in the past and then they've made us food. So what would be your favorite thing uh, to either make us or just take us to somewhere uh, to eat it? Yeah, well, I'm from Belgium, so for, uh, we have this thing called French fries, which are not French, um, but uh, they're Belgium. Uh, and in Belgium, the French fries are like the main part of the dish and everything revolves around it. Instead of in most countries, you just have your steak or whatever. And then friend, the French fries are just like a side dish. But we mm -hmm. have a whole culture uh, in Belgium where we just do the French fries with, with a couple of fried meat. Um, and then we have like lots of different sauces that can go with it. And we just eat a lot, a lot of fries and it's going to be like takeaway, like you have fish and chips in, in, in the UK. Um, lots of different Every every town has at least three or four of them where they can go for takeaway, um, and it's all it's all different. So those are not the same as the ones you make at home. So if you say we only eat fries once a week, we mean yeah we had the takeaway fries only once a week, but the other fries do not count. They're not the same thing. Right? <laughs> so, Perfect. You have to eat more of them. <laughs> um, so the French fries part is, is 
it's really part of the Belgian culture. So. Amazing. And there's so I'm coming to Belgium. Dishes. Okay, yeah, so, I'm coming for the first time this, this year, and conference. I'm excited to try it. Yeah, there's a great conference in October, Data Minds Connect. Uh, I think that can testify how awesome it is. <laughs> it also has it, a beer. So. Um, it really is. It also, but um, Data Minds Connect, um, not last year, but I'm going to say 2019 or so. I think that was the first time I attended Data Minds Connect. 2019 mm -hmm. or 2018. Um, no, it must have been 2019 because it was talking about VDC. Um, anyways, um, after the conference, um, we went to a um, basically Fry's restaurant. And I, I was like, um, are you sure we're going to have Fry's for d dinner? Um, but um, honestly, I'm, I'm down for it because I love Fry's. But I, I was like, okay, um, that's kind of like going to whichever place and just order like um, a plate of fries, which can be delicious and everything. But um, mm -hmm. little did I know how yeah. amazing that was. So hmm. I can't wait. Yeah. So are you going to Data Mines or going to Tecorama? Or what, what are you? Oh, no, Tecorama is... No, no. Yeah, there's a Tecorama. Yeah. So PS Comp. Or are you just PS going Comp for fun? You. Ha! PS Comp for you is, there this, uh, is in Antwerp this year. All right, so, yeah. I'll be there in yeah. June, July, summer. I can't remember what month <laughs> it is. No. But I'll be there. And of, <laughs> and of course, accompanied, uh, the French fries need to be accompanied, and we have those amazing beers here in Belgium. Um, oh, well, yeah. Well, what more can I say? Fries and beer. The favorite dish of most Belgians. Perfect. Maybe I should just attend PSConf. Yeah. Or maybe you should just be uh, be around during PSConf. <laughs> yeah, just come just come to the food bits in the evening. That's basically what I'm yeah. going for. Nice. It's not a very big country, so it's easy to be around. So then again, June is already a very busy month as it is. So we we shall have yeah, to see. It, I, it or might it might be also July. be July. There's that. We will figure it out and then we will put it to the show notes because apparently now we do have show notes and right. stuff. Um, I don't know how it works because technically our guests are responsible to put in the show yeah. notes for their episode, but now we were talking about something that didn't really concern Kuhn, as in when you were going to be in Belgium, Jess. But yeah, um, I'm going to leave that to you to decide if it's still up to him to actually put it into the show notes or how we're going to play this. Okay. I'll figure out when it is. Excellent. Step one. I like. Anyways, um, now I want French fries or Belgian fries or just fries. Delicious fries with some delicious Belgian sauce. Belgian French fries. Yeah. This is the way to you go. You know what? Belgian French fries, you could abbreviate that BFF and that's a sign. Amazing. <laughs> On that note, Ben, <laughs> end it. it. It won't get better than this. Thank yeah, you, Kuhn, nope. for joining us. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. And we see you all next week with yet another friend. Bye. Bye, folks. Bye.